All right. So welcome to the fifth careers challenge. Yes, I believe. So we have uh, we have um, learned about CV writing, LinkedIn profile creation, GitHub uh, profile creation, and Medium profile creation. And now we are into then how do we develop a cover letter? So let's go deeper into um, the content we have today. So before we get started, um, before we get started, can I hear like someone share their view on writing different cover letters? Because I know uh, so many people approach cover letters or even ignore cover letters or they approach them in different ways. So can I have someone who have tried applying before and having to attach cover letters share us their experience? Do we have that someone? Do we have that someone? Or if you haven't, also you can say no in the chat box so that I know that you can hear me. Okay, Mubarak said, I just done it for local companies. Yes, absolutely. So that's what I want to hear. How was the experience putting together a cover letter? Was it challenging, confusing, or confusing in a way that you don't know what the hiring managers expect to hear from the cover letter? Or did you just copy paste what you had in your CV and put there or oh, elaboratically in your cover letter? I mean, how was the experience? Did you like doing that or was it extra annoying work? Like, share us your experience. Mubarak. Okay, it is kind of <laughs> annoying because I have to change for uh, every company I have to apply. Uh, yeah, basically I did uh, explanation of the projects I have done. Uh, even other projects that are not on my CV, something like that. Just a detailed thing. Oh, so you detailed what you had on your CV? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, got it, got it. So thanks for sharing that. Let's go through the content and then will we be, um, will we be like uh, telling ourselves or understanding much more of what you mean uh, from the content that we're going to be seeing here in the tutorial. So how to write a cover letter that will get you a job? First and foremost, we have to understand the whole point of a cover letter. The whole idea of a cover letter is that it can help the employer see you more than just your resume. You know, because in your resume, that's where we get to write uh, just like bullet points like we are very straightforward but in the cover letter we have to let the employer know us more than just the cut the bullet points we put in our resumes so and as mubarak said there is a mistake that majority of us do which is summarizing what we have on our resume and put it in a cover letter but to be honest there is no point of duplicating what you have in the CV and put it in the cover letter because um, the hiring managers is going to be reading kind of the very same thing. So what's the point? What's the point really? So instead, your cover letter should go beyond your work history to talk about things that make you especially well suited for the job. So simply, what do I mean by this? Talk about what you are good at and how you, are, how you would approach the work. We are going to be seeing an example down here. An example, a common challenge, um, you can share probably some of the common challenge that you faced in your previous experience and how you solved it. Here I'm talking about if your role was kind of relevant with the role that you're trying to approach now. So this is the kind of approach you should be following. Share that common challenge you, pre you faced in your previous experience 
and then how you solved it and how you may help them bring solutions to that challenge too. This shows your understanding of the department's work. You know, when you are talking about the problems you faced in your previous career and you are talking about how you can help them solve the same problem within their companies, it shows the hiring manager that you absolutely understand the department work and you understand the pain points. Pain points, I'm talking about the things they are working on. And also it shows your value proposition because you already sold yourself that you have done this before. You have a practical experience on these and you're trying to be uh, selling the same. So this is for people, of course, who has some work experience. We are going to be seeing then in case you do not have any other uh, practical work experience. But of course, you have other practical experiences in different projects that you have put your hands on in the past. So we're going to be seeing that. And also, this was the second one. Remember the first one was, please understand the point of a cover letter from the hiring manager perspective. The second one was that whatever you do, do not summarize your resume into the cover letter. Instead, say what you're good at and how you approach the work. And number three, you do not have to have any creative opening line Anything that doesn't sound humane and conversational, just be straightforward with what you want and make it very human, make it personal. You know, you can start with, I'm, I'm, I'm writing to apply for your exposition. Absolutely, that's very, very straightforward. Or I would love to be considered for this, or I'm interested in this position, or I'm excited to apply for this position. Straightforward is fine more even better if the alternative is sounding like an aggressive salesperson you know those people who start with catchy statements and you sound like you're trying so hard to sell yourself no that 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 is kind of uh it doesn't kind of sound humane and when you're writing a cover letter you want uh you, you want the hiring manager to read it in your voice somehow like you are talking to her in your cover letter. So you do not want to sound like a salesperson. You have to sound like a genuine individual who's interested in their position and who can bring value, who believe they can bring value into their work. So be human, start with uh, an opening easy line because, you know, first impression, reading something, this is where we get or lose our marks. So number four, show and tell. Instead of simply declaring that you are great at X, your letter or a certain job, your letter should demonstrate that. Instead of just you declaring it, your letter should demonstrate that. And the way to do it is by describing accomplishments and experiences that illustrate it. So let me talk about these two different things. So majority of the cover letters, even the ones I've reviewed before, you find people using this kind of words, like I offer exceptional attention to detail, you know, for data people, and you highly developed at communication skills because you have to communicate um, your data results or anything, you know, just let's take this example from the data perspective. And then, and the talent, for managing complex projects like big data with a demonstrated ability to prioritize and multitask. Like, what's this? You are being so generic, you are not communicating anything specific. So to be more effective, this is how you can write it. For instance, in my previous role as an analytics engineer at this company, I successfully led a team in developing predictive analytics model now you are starting to mention what you have worked on like specifically so the hiring manager at this point they know that if they are looking for this specific someone who can develop this especially they are going to be considering you for an interview because they want to hear more of how you did it and then they continued to add their accomplishment how what were the results from this the result was that it improved customer retention by 15%.
And then by analyzing customer behavior patterns and implementing targeted marketing campaigns, we were able to identify and retain high value customers resulting in significant increase in revenue. What is this statement? It's from here to here. By analyzing, this is how you did it how you did it and how you were able to achieve something from it. So you already said what you did, the results, and then how you did it. And then you continue by selling yourself. I'm confident by, my, by leveraging my experience, that my experience in leveraging data to drive business outcomes will be valuable in helping your company achieve its goals. Like this sounds, um, of course, it's you yourself talking about your experience and it's straightforward. It shows them what they want to hear and what you can offer, what you're bringing to the table. So absolutely, they are going to be wanting to hear more like in an interview so that you can tell them in details then how everything went in this situation. So, and also when you are talking, ensure that you keep the tone warm and conversational. In most fields, your letter will stand out if it's warm and conversational. Aim for the tone that you would use when you're writing for a coworker who at most of the point you do not know very well. Aim to like imagine you're talking to a certain coworker. You do not them very well to joke around. That's why you keep it professional, but you keep it warm. You talk to them in a very, using the kind of human and personal language, you know, something that they can easily understand. There was this question that Nasrallah raised uh, last time about uh, like, is it difficult to get to pass the recruitment stage and go into the interview stage? just because the hiring managers majority of the hiring managers do not have experience in tech related roles this is where you keep your tone warm and conversational in your cover letter so that they do not have technical experience like the technical technical experience but they have experience in hiring for technical roles so how do you communicate your tech technical skills in a kind of language that other people understands, other people who are not in your field understands. So this is how you do it. Like use the normal language, use the normal language that everyone can understand and keep it warm and conversational. So, and also keep it under one page um, because why? This shows efficiency. Short cover letters saves time for both you and hiring manager allowing for quicker evaluation. When it's short and straight to the point, it saves you time, it saves time to the hiring manager and they can evaluate you quickly. Like you have important information in your letter. And number two, the relevance. A concise letter ensures that every word you write directly contributes to showcasing your qualifications and aligns with the job requirements. You know, you should be, we should be putting in our minds that everything you wrote in your cover letter, it has a purpose. It has a purpose. And then engagement. A brief, compelling letter is more likely to capture attention of the busy hiring professionals. Hiring managers are the busiest people, especially in this economy today, unfortunately, because of so many layoffs that has been going on in so many tech companies around the world. So there are thousands of people on the job markets now, not even thousands, millions of people. So they are the busiest hiring managers. So keeping it short, it increases the chance of them reading it. Like it's engaging when it's short. And then clarity, of course, them, you know, that speaks for itself. Short letters, um, they are always clearer and easy to follow. And then respect of time, it demonstrates respect for the time constraint of hiring managers, conveying your understanding of these schedules and time management. And of course, they even see that you are a person who understands what you do. You know, when you understand what you do, you explain it easily and in few minutes, 
than someone who's trying to find what to say about what they do. That's someone who doesn't know what they do. So as hardworking people who have been trained here, um, who have been trained here at Ten Academy, you have been, you, you absolutely know what you are going to be doing at these companies you are going to be working for in your respective track. So show that you understand it by keeping things simple and short, like communicate your value. So in summary, your cover letter should be having the following. Number one, the introduction. You should briefly introdu introduce yourself, mention the specific job position you're applying for. Simply introducing yourself is just saying, I am, let's say, Rodolph uh, with your second name, and I'm a data engineer, and I'm interested or I'm applying a, oh, sorry, I'm interested in applying for this position. That is it, that's the brief introduction. You do not have to add where you're from or anything else. It's just your name, your position, and then mention the specific job you're applying for. And number two, show passion and enthusiasm. Why does this come before you talking about why you are fit and your value proposition? It's because, Again, remember about the culture fit we talked about in different career sessions. Remember about um, remember about how employees are more interested in people who share the same visions with them. This is where you interest your genuine interest in the role or in the company. You should be saying how you are uh, driven by their mission of doing this and that. When the company understands that you understand their mission, you are highly to be con considered. You're highly to be considered, even though you do not understand so much about their mission because you are going to be applying for too much jobs. So you just have to mention it. You just have to mention it in your cover letter. And then, and how do you get to find this? Of course, it's by researching and going to their website and just picking that mission board and that is it and say a little bit of how you relate to their mission very one sentence or two sentences that highlights your personal and enthusiasm for working for this company and then you go ahead and mention why you are fit according to their job description you pick one or two qualification and experiences that align with uh, their job description or job requirement and then you go ahead to say your value proposition. Mention what you are bringing to the organization. You know, you this is why you bring the statement like we saw yes, before in the previous slides, where you sell yourself in a very systematic, technical manner and straightforward. And then closing statement. You do not have to be creative about this closing statement as well or make yourself look like you are begging for the role. Majority of people do that, where you close saying, oh, you will highly appreciate when you get considered for the interview. You will highly appreciate, no. You, we should be knowing our value as job seekers. You have the value you are bringing to the company, so you shouldn't be selling yourself short at all. Just keep it simple say thank you for your consideration and i hope to speak soon that sounds very um very straightforward and very confident hope to speak soon that is it you can use other kind of words this is just an example but make it simple and make it professional so how do we do that you have to research and prepare Search about the company. If you found the role on LinkedIn, do not click easy apply. You know that feature on LinkedIn. Do not click easy apply, really. Just um, go to the website and apply there. That's the very first thing. That way it allows you to even read a bit about the company and the mission. And you can even go to LinkedIn and check their latest posts latest post that means the top post that is there for you to have an understanding of what they are doing and what's trending in their company and that is it now you have in this doesn't take even 10 minutes of your time so let's ensure that we're researching about the company we are going to be sending these cover letters to 
and then identify key qualifications like we said and then prioritize your recent relevance when you are writing prioritize your recent relevance what you want them to to um to consider you for if you do not have prior experience in the role you're applying for in your cover letter you shouldn't be talking about the experience that is written in your cv and doesn't have anything to do with the job you're applying for in this cover letter i want you to focus even on the example you give i want you to focus on the projects that you have been running and the results that came from the project how did your project run what were the end results the successful part of it i want you to be focusing on the relevance either if you had career experience or not focus on the relevance focus on what you want the hiring manager to know about you and then number four optimize the content section that means um allocate make it like a letter do not make it like a like an article to read you know articles that doesn't have any paragraphs that doesn't have any alignment no align it very very well in a way that we can be able to read these things these things here very separately the introduction part itself the passion the why you are fit your value proposition then the closing statement make it easy to go through and then number five it's what we call condensing simplify simplicity just to be specific review your content for long phrases or unnecessary words aim to convey more with fewer words while maintaining clarity very self-explanatory for example this is what i'm trying to say we have some of the original some of the things that people write and then here's what i think should be improved for instance someone who say i believe that i have python skills and seven years of data experience that are relevant to this position do not improve it like this do not say i believe or i can or things that make people doubt you. Actually, when you are actually saying um, in this kind of job application and you use this kind of words, I think, I believe, um, I suggest, I do the, like all those kind of words that make you not feel confident. No, go straight forward and say, I have the relevant Python skills and some many many years of data experience for this position done done like believe it whether you have many years or whether you just have one year done and then another example someone who say in order to succeed in this role i plan to proactively engage with cross-functional teams leveraging my agile project management expertise to improve collaboration, I'm talking about people who will be joining uh, the project management teams as they are engineers or, uh, you know, any project, any department that you will join. Take this as an example. So improved, I would say, to succeed in this role, are we proactively? Do not say, oh, I plan this, this, or saying unnecessary words like in order to succeed. No, say, be be uh straightforward say to succeed in this role are we proactively engaged cross-functional teams and lever leveraging agile project management expertise to improve collaboration done so when you are done writing your cover letter before submission just look if, if you do not have any unnecessary unnecessary words or things that make you look like you are not confident about what you're talking about step number six Enhance clarity and readability. You know, um, you should be reviewing your content to ensure that it's clear and readable. It's easy to understand and flow smoothly. For instance, someone who says, I have experience working with diverse team, which has given me valuable skills. This is very generic, actually. At some point, uh, nowadays, people have this thing of, uh, confirming that things are very robotic, they are chat GPT, 
Because trust GPT, of course, it will give you this kind of sentence because it doesn't know what you did before. So it gives you a generic thingy. Even though you wrote this yourself, still, it doesn't provide anything. It doesn't communicate anything. You can improve it like this, but you can also say it best like this. So let's see the difference we have between the improved and the best. For the improved, you, someone who said, I've successfully collaborated with diverse teams on five major projects, resulting 20% increase in project efficiency. That's an example. And then best saying, I collaborated with diverse team on five projects, increasing project efficiency but by 20%. What is the difference? The difference is in this word, successfully. Successfully, um, words like, oh, I'm highly this, this. Uh, there are things we have been seeing in the CV. People who say um, highly extensive this and that, this kind of buzzwords or saying I successfully did this. If you achieved 20% increase, it means success. You do not have to say it. When you keep using this kind of buzzwords, it doesn't show um, it doesn't show confidence. That's the easy word I can say. So let's ensure that we're straightforward and to the point. And then number seven. So I have been. Just to give a little disclaimer, I have been using just the examples in my own experience as, uh, as a manager on different projects, different people and staff, but we are going to be having examples of ideal cover letters from the technical team today. So you will be seeing it in your view, like in your lens as, uh, as technical people in your track. But I believe these are also this gives you an exam, uh, a, a view of what it should be looking like. I believe so. Can I have some thumbs up or can I know if it might be confusing you? Can you hear me? Okay, Mubarak says it's clear, Magdes, AI, yeah. Just take this as examples. And I believe, you know, wh when we get the sample, cover letters from the technical team, then you will be seeing it from your lens and then you can refer to these examples. So number seven is just making it error free, making it, uh, proofreading it, making it error free, uh, making it concise, making it relevant and ensuring these very important words. Again, remember every word should serve a purpose. And this is, um, it, it's like a lot of, rules to consider but to be honest this is what makes the work easier for you you know when you have to be straightforward and you do not have to add any kind of selling point words those are actually what tires you so these like keeping it short and ensuring that you just put their meaningful things that you believe the hiring manager and other technical managers that you will meet further in the interviews should read and be able to hear you and to get your experience and to get why you qualify for the position very quickly. It's it's what makes the job easier, you know? So cover letters won't be as tiresome when you follow all these kind of rules. So we are going to be having the samples here late today let's have a quick look at the challenge documents now so the background um we should be remembering that in today's fast-paced digital world attention spans are very short like people do not have time so and because of this it's crucial for us job seekers like you and me, to learn how to write compelling and concise cover letters. And I really believe you do not ignore it just because you have a lot of applications to do. Send in your cover letter. You might stand out more than someone who just sent their CV. So it, it actually, even sending cover letters in these days, it shows that you care to the, for the company. 
that's to be honest because also an advantage of having those millions of people who are in the job market today is the fact that you can just look for what others are not doing and then you do it and what are they not doing it's writing cover letters why because they are applying to thousands of jobs on a on a monthly basis hundreds of jobs on a monthly basis and they think that and and they are so emotionally drained to keep writing for cover, cover letters for companies that probably we even not reply them not even sent that rejection email at least you know so you take advantage of that and do what other people are not doing so yeah run uh, learn how to write compelling and concise cover letters and also a short cover letter that's customized for a specific position it makes great impression even when the hiring manager has limited time because she understands that she can go through it quickly and then for job postings that you are genuinely interested in taking time to craft a thoughtful cover letter is well worth it it allows your unique voice and enthusiasm for the work to shine through. I hope we always remember this. So the checklist, it's the same as the checklist we have in the tutorial, introduction, the passion, why you are fit, value proposition, and then the closing statement. So what's the task? Of course, remember to look for the guide into uh, the slide deck. So what do we have as the task? You are going to be checking the job description for specific tracks we have here. Uh, let me share them. So we have different jobs that we pulled. Uh, they are not a month old, all of them. We pull, I pulled them from LinkedIn. So you might even take the opportunity to just go see if you can drop your application for now. You know, they're still open. So we have for, for data engineering, gen AI and machine learning. And you just have to come within your track and then provide a cover letter for this specific job position. Uh, let me open one. So we have this role. It's client support data engineer. Again, like you can see, uh, you might be joining different departments, not the data engineering team specifically. You might be joining the client support team, but as the data engineer, you will be working for data for their specific client. So yeah, we have about the job, we have the environment where they talk about their company and also uh, what they're expecting you when you get to fill the role. We have the duties, we have the requirements, the experience and skills, we have um, advantages, just in case like of course they are looking for this person but the advantage is on here and then the attributes like you should be client oriented things we talked about the culture fit client oriented so this is something that should be coming in your cover letter like you should not just be mentioning how you fit into the role just that you should be mentioning how you are this thing and you should be mentioning some of the, like one or two from the attributes. And also there are things that we have in the job description, but that you might not feel. So we still have them here. For instance, they are looking for someone who has um, a degree in computer science and probably you do not have it or an engineering degree or someone who has experience in applied mathematics and probably you do not have it. But I hope we put the, this here as an experience because you won't be applying for a job where you find that you, you check every box of the, check, of the qualifications. No, you might find that you are qualified at some point, but not really fulfill all the qualifications, but you have to drop your application anyway. So when you find some of the things you're not qualified for here, find a way to manage it in your cover letter. You can ignore them or talk about it, you know, easy. So yeah, but this is from a junior role perspective um, and mid-level role. And we also, we have for Gen AI, is for a company in Hungary, there are links 
to these specific roles uh, on LinkedIn. So you can even go check out. We have the introduction of the company, your day to day, what you will be working on, what they are looking for. Like they are very straightforward with it. And what go to office? You work remotely with Hungarian and you know Budapest people and everything. And then about the company here. So we have this and for machine learning also uh we have about the job it's i of a company in liberia we have about the job responsibilities qualifications like you can see how uh the qualification here is too long but at some point you fit into some of the qualifications but not all of them so you have to drop your application anyway as long as you see that you have some of the major experience they are looking Sorry, much of the skills and skills that they are looking for. So yeah, this is it. Uh, let me go back to the challenge document. And then you have to check that within your respective track, you create your one page cover letter for that specific job. And then you will receive examples um, here of the professional cover letters to refer to later today, like some of the ideal ones. And then submission as always, it's in PDF. Oh, did I say your CV? Your CL, your cover letter in PDF format on tanks. And then we'll be providing individual feedbacks to the trainees. You will be receiving feedbacks from literally everyone. So yeah, that's why um, uh, before I finish, I, I hope we all remember the announcement Rod has shared that we should be giving out um, commenting access, comment access on your CVs. So you should have it here and share as access. Anyone with the link can comment. So that will be it. I hope you give us that access for everyone. Each one of us are going to be putting their views on your CV because actually that's what matters the most. So even on Cavalitas, each one of us, we are going to be giving you compiled uh, feedback. Yeah. Um, any questions? Okay, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, it's not the question. Uh... The, the permission I gave it as editor, is that okay? Uh, no, do not, uh, no, do not give us editing access because we might delete something. Uh, so it's better just uh, okay, give so out. We... Yeah, we might delete something by mistake or delete a letter or, you know, there are mistakes when you have editing access. Just give us commenting access. Yeah, um, that is it. Any question? Okay, Aaron. Uh, is, is, is it uh, just like application? Is this application letter or not? Uh, it's the same for application letter for a specific uh, company. Uh, yeah, I heard. To... Yeah. Oh, Why is the difference that. between application letter and uh, cover uh, cover uh, letter? What's the difference? Aaron, come again. Yeah, what is the difference between cover letter and uh, application letter? Mm -hmm. They are all the same. It's just letters to show your interest. They are all the same. Some people call it application letter, but the universal word of it, it's cover letters. So yeah, they are the same. Um, yep. I guess that is it. We can call it a day. Some thumbs up. Okay, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate. I appreciate. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's call it a day. Have a great evening. Any questions, any curiosity, you, we, we can have a discussion reaching the inbox. Have a great day.